Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name's Tie-Dye. I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. So welcome to a brand new Maya tutorial. In today's tutorial, what we're gonna cover is actually the introductory to rendering tutorial that I've been talking about for a while. Now, Maya is a great program for rendering, but for those of you who are coming from maybe Cinema 4D or are new to Maya, uh, you guys might understand or, or sort of been messing around with some of the basic render settings, and from that, you sort of see that they are very, very low quality. For me especially, when I was starting off to, to learn Maya, I realized right off the bat that the rendering is a lot different in this program than maybe a few other 3D applications out there. It has some of the best 3D rendering out there, some of the most realistic stuff possible you can actually make within this program, but the default settings are terrible and it is kind of hard to sort of figure out how to get to where you need to be to get some of these really high quality renders. So one of the cool things about this program is uh, it's always updating and one of the cool things is with Maya 2017, they've included a free, it's sort of like already installed into the program, uh, a plugin called Arnold. Now, Arnold is only in 2017, so if you're using 2016 or anything prior to that, I highly recommend downloading 2017. And the reason for that is because the Arnold renderer is pretty much what we're going to be using for this tutorial. And even if you do model in 2016 or do your animation in 2016, uh, it is really helpful just to open up those project files in 2017 if you're going to be doing a render. That's what I do. I do all of my workflow in 2016, and then if I need to render something, I will bring it into 2017. And it's a free download if you're a student, which uh, most of you are. And if you do have a license, it's a free upgrade. So you might as well just download the program. Uh, it's totally worth it in my opinion and the rendering is great. So I'm just going to set up a very very basic scene here. So I'm just going to bring in a polygon primitive and a plane. And uh, from here all I'm going to do is just sort of make it a bit more simple. I'm just going to take the uh, subdivisions and bring those down and let's make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the grid and let's render a few objects here. So let's say we want to render a Let's do a cube and a sphere. So for the cube, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the um, the anchor point here to the bottom by pressing D and selecting the bottom face to align it there and D again. And then in my side view, I can uh, go to this or any of the side views, for example, and uh, pretty much just turn on my snap to grid with this magnet here. And now I can just sort of bring it exactly down onto the grid perfectly and turn that off. And you just go back to my perspective view. And now if I scale it up, it's going to be perfectly scaled onto there. And let's do the same thing for a sphere. So create polygon primitives sphere. And uh, let's move our, our point to the bottom there. So D and align it to the bottom vertice and D again. And put on our snap to grid tool up here. And once again, just bring it down onto the grid. And we can blow it up larger in size and just sort of place it wherever it works. And I'm going to turn off the snap to grid option. So now we just have these two objects here on top of our plane, just so we have a few different um, different objects to see how they react to light and whatnot. So by default, when rendering in Maya, it's going to look something like this. So to get to your render options, I'm just going to go up here to these sort of uh, director cut boards. I'm not exactly sure the uh, exact name of those, but if I hit the one with the eyeball, and as you can see, we're using Maya software, which is the default renderer, and we hit the little uh, action button there. By default, it renders it out like this, which is pretty bad. It, it's nothing great. Like, the sphere maybe is okay. The cube is terrible. It looks very as if it's even um, cell shaded to some degree, right? It's not very high quality at all. And the reason that we're going to be using Arnold is because it is a really great, it can be real-time rendering. Um, it is all around a very professional... Uh, render software. It's a plugin that you can use for multiple different programs and the cool thing is they actually use it. This is kind of like one of those industry standard um, software. So this is, they're, they're using this render software in pretty much most of the movies out there these days. It's used all the time. And the fact that it's built into Maya is super helpful, especially since uh, a lot of people are using it just to learn. So the fact that you have your hands on a tool like this is really great. So how do we actually get to use this? So if we go into our render settings, which is this little cut board with the uh, gear beside it, we're in our render settings now, and we can change our um, render. It says render using, and then by default it's Maya software, but we can change that to Arnold Renderer. And it's going to change some settings. We have a lot more stuff to uh, sort of mess around with here. Uh, but before we get into that, one of the things I want to do is set up a project file. Now, for those of you who have never set up a project file, what a project file is, is it's kind of just like a folder where you can keep all of your files together. And if you're doing a lot of rendering or say you're doing an animation, uh, this is super helpful and pretty much a must that you have to do. So I'm going to go to File and Set Project. Actually, no, sorry. We're going to go to File and right above it is project window and I'm going to hit new 
and I'm just gonna name this one uh, tutorial. Uh, if I can spell, I'm using one hand here and it's my wrong hand. So I'm also just gonna save it to the desktop and just press accept. So now if I go to the desktop, we have this new file called tutorial. And if I open it up, we have all these different files in here. We have our audio files that we can use, our assets, our images, all this kind of stuff. So this is just one place to keep it all together. So if you wanna move it from computer to computer, it's easy. And in professional use, this is what people are using all the time. So it's really easy to keep things together. And I highly recommend using these kind of folders. Uh, it's also really great because you can save your scenes into here, which I'm gonna do really quickly. Uh, save scene, and let's just see where I can find tutorial. And we'll just save that into our scenes folder. I'm just gonna do just, just the number one, just so it's easy to remember. It's saying that I'm a student, so yep, I understand that. And by default, if you wanna get back to that, all you have to do is files and then set project and select your folder that way. So anyways, now that we have our project folder set, whenever we render an image, it'll go right to that file for us under images, I believe. And uh, you can actually double check that by going back to our settings and it's gonna show us here. So the path for our images now are gonna be going to our desktop and then to our tutorial file and then into images, just so we know exactly where they are. We can also change a couple other things in here, uh, such as image format. We can change that to maybe a JPEG or a PNG is probably good. TIFF is also really good um, if you're doing a lot. But for this, I'm gonna do a PNG uh, format, wouldn't really mess around with a lot of this stuff here. A lot of this is pretty default. This is if you're doing animation. If you do want to set up animation, you have to change your, uh, your frame slash animation extension to be something of multiple frames. So anything other than the top two here. And then you're allowed to choose how many frames you want to render. Um, but for this case, we're just rendering a single frame. And we can change our camera as to what we want to render. We don't have any cameras set up, but if we did have a camera set up, you can choose it. It would be uh, one of these options here. And we can change our size, which is also very important. I'm just going to make mine a standard 1280 by 720, just for 720p, just to keep it simple. Uh, resolution, maybe 100, just to keep it as high quality as possible. And we can also go into some Arnold settings here. Uh, system, what I would do if you are going to be doing a final render, I would bring up all these settings a little bit, maybe from two to four, just double everything up, just so it increases the quality of uh, pretty much everything that you're working with here. So just double it up for your final render. And essentially, we're good to go from there. So now that we have Arnold set up, uh, let's give it a render and see what happens. So I'm going to render once again, hitting this little, uh, little director's cut board here. And when it starts rendering, it's gonna take a while, especially since my computer is actually recording my screen. You can already notice that there's actually nothing popping up. Now, the reason for that is because Arnold and most third-party plugin renderers are a little bit different in how they work in Maya. You actually have to use Arnold lights and Arnold textures to have anything pop up. So if I close this, uh, we can't actually just go into edit or create um, and lights. None of these are gonna work. I can import them and nothing's gonna work there. What we have to do is go to Arnold and go to lights here and import these lights. So say I go and let's just do a quick sky dome light because it's just all the way around, really quick, simple lighting. And as long as I have that selected, I can go under attribute editor and adjust a few things like the intensity and the color and whatnot. And a great way that you can actually check this stuff in real time is using the Arnold, Arnold render view. And if I click that, as you can see, we get our stuff rendering in real time here. So we can see our stuff and how it would look in real time. It'll update in real time. It'll do several passes. It will take a while because I'm recording this, but as you can see, it'll start sort of showing you each frame and, and how it looks in real time. And you can get that real time quality and see what it would actually look like when you're finally done rendering it, which is great. So as you can see, it does look definitely a lot better than before. And this is with just the base default um, texture and the base default lighting that we had from that sky dome. So we can actually change things in real time as well. So say I change the intensity of the color, or intensity of the light, sorry. It starts to get a bit brighter. I can drop it darker. I can adjust the color and it'll all update in real time here, which is pretty handy for sure. And there's multiple different types of light as well. So I am just gonna close out of that because when you import a new light or a new mesh, it actually doesn't pop up in the render view right away. You actually have to uh, close it and open it up again. So I'm gonna import another light. There's a bunch of different lights here. I'll go over them. So area light, is just kind of a light that's pointing in one direction and you know which direction it's pointing in based on this line that's sticking out here and it behaves just like the uh, other lights do so let's say i open up the render view once again and right now it's just set to white 
But let's say I change the color to red so it's easy to spot out. And it's actually not really doing a whole lot at the moment. Let's point it closer to that cube and bring the intensity from one, maybe up to something a little bit more dramatic like 50. And you can start seeing it it's just because the other light is so, so um, powerful, even up to 100. There you go. You can start seeing the color a little bit better there. And it's starting to have some cool effects. And another great thing that you can actually do using the Arnold renderer is you can actually turn polygons into lights. So say I wanted to make this sphere a light just so I sort of have a radial light involved and uh, it's going to make my scene a little bit easier to get a sort of 3D illumination that I'm going for. What I can do is click on my sphere, go to Arnold lights and actually do mesh light and it's actually going to turn this mesh into a light so now if i go back into the render view as you can see our sphere is actually gone it has actually become a light now so what i can do is turn the intensity up maybe to like a let's just see how much 100 does it starts brightening everything up quite a bit i can move it around and it's going to affect how everything looks there as it's updating. If it clips through something though, it will have shadows of course, but there is a way to disable shadows. And I'm just under my uh, sphere settings here, under my Arnold settings. So it's not too hard to find this kind of stuff. Shadow density, you can turn shadow color off if you want to. Uh, I'll just turn the density down to zero. That way there are no shadows actually, because it's just going to be a straight of light. But this is a great way that if you're actually making, say, a... Um, Say you're making a light bulb or something, you can actually make it a light. So you can have a light bulb and then a light that's actually the exact same shape, reacting how a normal light bulb would. So it's a really cool thing that you can do there. And as you can see, the quality of this render is just getting better and better as time goes on and it does more processing. But it is really cool. The render that's built in with 2017, even though we haven't really done too much, is really great. And uh, we haven't even touched the textures yet. So say you wanted to get a texture done. I'm just going to delete the sphere just for uh, simplicity. What you'd actually do is use a Arnold texture. And the way that we get to those is I'm going to open up the hyper shader using this icon here next to the uh, render settings conveniently. And I'm just going to click on that. And it should open up this window right here. So what I can actually do is under textures, under the uh, texture options on the left hand side, you can go to Arnold and I can just click the little texture drop down or just click on texture, sorry. Uh, let's see, actually shaders. Shaders is what we're going to want to click on. And under AI standard, we can just open that up. And now we have these settings here. So these are just sort of like default texture settings like we would normally have with any other sort of Maya texture. We can import a map to our color. We can sort of mess around with the color right here if we want to. And uh, let's just make this sort of like a red cube or something like that. We can change the roughness. We can change a lot of things here. We can also render this out using Arnold just to see what it looks like in real time with the exact same render settings. Uh, we can adjust the reflection here. How shiny is it going to be? Pretty much all of our normal settings that we would have in any other texture we can use here. We can import maps. We can do all that kind of stuff. This is just the very basics of it. And I'm just going to texture or name the texture red just so we uh, can keep track of that right there. And that's all you have to do essentially. So now what I can do is I can click on this, hold right click, assign existing materials and red. And now if we go into our render view, we have a red cube with that one light on it. And obviously you'd never use something like this. You'd probably make a little bit more uh, interesting of a texture, hopefully, because that is it's pretty simple. But that's the very, very basics of setting up your lights, setting up your scene, a couple of the lights that you can use, uh, how to actually get color onto your objects and whatnot. And if you do want to export this render, what you can actually do is I'll show you a couple options here. So if we go under the rendering tab here, under render, what we can do is do a render sequence. And if we click that, what it's going to do is start rendering our frame. And it's kind of interesting because the way that Arnold actually works is because with a lot of renders in Maya, what you're going to be doing is a batch render. And a batch render is going to render out all of your frames. So it's sort of going to sort of... If you're making an animation, it's going to render out each frame one at a time. But what happens with Arnold is because Arnold is actually a plugin that most programs you have to pay for, and it's sort of built into this, it's going to actually have a watermark on all of your stuff. So as you can see, this rendered out here. And if we go to our folder that we made under images, we have it right here, fully rendered. Um, 
But like I said before, normally what you would normally do in any other render situation is you do a batch render, but there's gonna be a watermark if you do that. So say you do wanna export an animation. So let's say we have this cube starting here. I'm just gonna hit S to do a first keyframe. And I'll have it only five frames long. I'm just gonna move it over here and press S. And just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna make this five frames so it's easy to watch. And let me just do a quick, uh, let's see, playback speed, real time. Okay, yeah, that's pretty fast, but that's the way it looks. That's just a very simple animation right there. Um, what you can actually do to get all of those frames out at the same time is do that render sequence once again, but we'd have to go into our settings this time, all the way back to the main tab. And this is where that little thing comes in earlier, frame animation extension. We're gonna change that to, uh, let's do name.number. And let's just do start frame one and frame 10 and change the 10 to five because we only have five frames. And then from here, what we can do is find a good angle that we like, go to render and render sequence. And now what it's gonna do is render out all five of those frames. And a way that you can sort of think about this is typically movies are 24 frames a second, right? So essentially there's one rendered image 24 times every single second, which is kind of hard to think about because in games it's a bit different and I know a lot of you guys are coming from more of a gaming background, but uh, it's pretty much the exact same thing for films. And the cool thing about it is we're rendering one frame at a time. We're not rendering exactly a video where we're just rendering all the different frames and then we compile them together later. So this is cool because say your computer crashes or there's a power outage or something like that. We've just rendered individual frames and say you get like 34 frames into a hundred frame render, then you can just sort of start from frame 35 and continue from there. And for those of you who don't actually know how to put together frames, all you'd have to do is sort of go into After Effects or any other program like that and import the very first frame. And if they're all together in the same folder, it's actually gonna turn all of those frames into a video file for you. And uh, let's just see while I go back here. Yep, it's rendering all of our frames together. We'll just open that up, moving over. And that's just frame one and two right there. And it will take a while, of course. Rendering is sort of a tedious process, but that is just the gist of it. How you'd set up your lights, how you could do an animation, and uh, pretty much the very, very basics of rendering within Maya. Like I said, this is 2017, so if you are new to rendering, um, I would highly recommend checking out 2017 before anything else, simply because the rendering here is a lot better than in any other version of Maya. And it's just a lot easier to understand this stuff uh, if you're going in from the from say you're coming from scratch if you're coming into the more advanced programs it is totally worth it rather than easing yourself in with mediocre programs because there's no point in even learning those programs they're not going to really teach you a lot and they're not very practical and arnold really isn't too too difficult to learn once you understand the basics of the texturing and the lights and you set up the lights properly like this is a scene where the lights are very very basic and the reason that is is because i just wanted to do a tutorial but say you wanted to do any sort of scene that's realistic you'd set up lights a little bit more properly this is just more or less how to even get them in there and adjust them and and uh, sort of mess around with the exposure and whatnot. But this final frame is rendering here. And uh, with that done, guys, I think that's it for the tutorial this time. One last thing to keep in mind, though, while you are doing this render, you actually cannot use Maya, which is a downside to this version of rendering. But it really doesn't take too, too long. If you have a decent computer, it is a fairly, fairly quick process. If you only do five frames, for example, but uh, most... Most videos are going to be a lot longer than that, but that's the very basics of rendering, guys. Hopefully you did learn something. And another quick cool thing is you can actually um, scrub through your frames with the render view here and see it uh, update in real time, which is great. I was just using this for a project. It helped me out a ton. But anyways, guys, like I said, hopefully you did learn something from this. If you did a like on this video, it would be great. I'm going to do an animation tutorial soon, so if you're looking forward to that, smack that like button. Let me know with a comment and subscribe if you're new here, guys. But once again, my name has been Tie-Dye. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.